That's how you build ATM machines. If I can spend $3, but I can get back $8, like I will just run this machine all day. I will feed it money all day because it will return more. That's how your marketing should be. You should be getting all the customers you can possibly handle. There's no reason that you can't just shove money in and get more money out. There's absolutely no reason. If you are not able to do that, you are missing probably one of these five steps. Every other local small business, just spray and pray advertising where they're just spending money on crap, hoping that it works and it's just going to everyone and they're burning, they're just dumping money. It's like a shovel. They're shoveling money into this furnace of Google and Facebook and they're spending so much money they don't even know where it's going. You're paying some SEO company. I don't know, you're paying some website guy, who knows, versus just trying to figure these basic, five basic things out that don't cost anything. You're gonna be in a, such a great place. It's just a math. How much money can you dump into it? That's it. Welcome to the High Response Marketing Podcast. I'm Jake Lorraine. This is a great resource for local business owners. There's really not that much that I've found to help local, like brick and mortar, local businesses with marketing. It seems like, and not even brick and mortar, doesn't have to be brick and mortar, it could be service-based business, or maybe you're a dentist, real estate agent, you own a boutique, or you're a professional marketer that's in the business of helping other local businesses, because that's a great thing to do even as a side hustle. So it's going to cover all topics on that, but there's just really not that much out there that's good that I found. There's a ton of motivational stuff and there's a ton of stuff like Gary V and Grant Cardone and stuff that, that applies to more so bigger or online type stuff. Uh, not the local everyday kind of business owner. I just don't find a lot of resources for that. So I hope this podcast really helps you because I know as a local business owner, like budgets can be. They can be zero sometimes. Budgets can be completely zero, hardly any budget. And and sometimes you have money and you want to spend money, but you don't know what to spend it on. Like you don't even really know. You would think that today there would be more advertising options than there was like 20, 30, 50 years ago, but there's not. There's. It seems like now there's even less. There's less and less and less as, as search engines become so smart, as things become a pay to play kind of thing, uh, you get no exposure on Facebook. You know, you have a Facebook page. You've probably experienced this. You can't post, you post on, you put all this effort into posting on it and no one sees it. Like Facebook wants you to promote the post, sponsor the post, pay for ads. Everything is just pay, 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 ad driven. Same with Google, same with uh, paid search on Google. You've probably gotten the cards from Google, you know, here's $500 free advertising or something, you rip through that. You can go through that like water. And if you don't have your numbers right and you don't have everything fine-tuned and dump a ton of money into testing, you may have experienced this. It's like you're just throwing money out because you don't, you're, it's not like you're this big corporation that has these marketing departments and all these analytics and you can figure out all these key metrics and everything and everything is analyzed and tracked and to, you don't have you don't have a full time marketing department that does that like these giant corporations do, which makes it incredibly hard for the small local business owner to really figure out advertising that works. Uh, there's not it's not like you can throw an ad in the paper anymore. You know that's not you used to be able to put an ad in the yellow pages or the paper. I mean, you had all these options and and ways that you could get in front of people. And today it's like it's so hard. It's a totally different landscape than it was and it's it's getting uh, well not not for me it's not getting worse but in general i think it's getting harder for small business owners to figure out how they can spend their money and get a return and get something out of it i think seo if you don't know what seo is search engine optimization you used to be able to in the last decade you used to be able to pay a a, a marketing business an seo agency and they could do a whole bunch of stuff and get your business ranking higher on Google. They could stuff it with keywords. They could build a lot of backlinks and extra content and maybe load your website with a lot of content and citations and all this, all this stuff to basically game Google. Because for the longest time, Google and search engines weren't as smart as they are today. They were basically just trying to figure out what has the most content, what has the most looks like it's probably got the, the, the most content, whether that's from links to other websites 
or just has a ton of stuff on its own website or has a lot of keywords that people might be looking for. And it would return those results. And if you had more, more of that information on your website, it would, it would be higher up in the search results. But that's not what it is today. It's like it, today Google is so smart and other search engines, they're so smart. They just know. There's a whole lot of other factors that take out the gaming since you're not gaming it anymore. And they make changes all the time. They make algorithm changes. It's extremely difficult to game the system. You almost can't really game the system anymore. So it's a new landscape, uh, which is which has just become really challenging for the, your everyday local business owner. So I'm going to show you on today's podcast five things every small business owner can do to fix their marketing right now. So these are five. These are five things that every local business owner can do right now to fix their marketing. These can be done with zero budget. These don't aren't going to take any budget to do. It's really not going to take any money. Cuz I don't know what your budget is. You could have a you could have a, a zero budget. You could be working with and it doesn't matter. You could be working with a very large budget. I'm positive some if not all of these things will help you. No matter what what stage your business is in, whether it's brand, whether you haven't even started yet. Maybe you haven't even started your business yet. Or maybe you're, you're in your first year, you just opened, or maybe you have, have things that are going pretty good and you're looking to take things to the next level or looking to find out new things. This is for you. Number one, the first thing that you can do right now to fix your marketing is your Google My Business profile. So Google Business profile, whatever they're calling it at the time, they change the name all the time. Number one first thing that you should be doing is claiming it, if you haven't claimed it already, and, and optimizing it. And when I say optimize, I mean just fill this thing out completely. Go get your Google listing, get it verified so that it's, that it's you. Optimize the heck out of this thing. Fill out every single category, everything you can put, put the services, the products that you sell, your hours, make a post, add pictures, Add pictures of your storefront. If you have a storefront, you can still have one if you don't. You can still have a service area one. Your contact information, every possible thing. Fill this thing out. I can't stress enough how important that is. Google returns the best result for people. And if it if it knows you're putting time into its listing, you're keeping your hours up to date, you're keeping this, you got all the services that you offer, whether you're handicap accessible, right down to whether you're like a transgender safe space or something is on there. Like it will factor all that stuff in and return the best results. When your competitors don't have all that optimized, there's, there's people who don't have, there's businesses, competitors that won't have their, their Google business problem, but they'll be running ads. They'll be running paid ads and trying to force their way up to the top. Meanwhile, you can bypass that and you can actually look better on search results because your business just has more stuff filled out and it's current with Google. Now, over time, if you stay on it and you keep making little posts, keep adding pictures, keep your hours up to date, Google will recognize that and will know, okay, this person is is up to date with their Google stuff. We're going to be returning them more, more often. So do that. It's, it's free. It's just your time. If you are running a local business and you haven't optimized that thing, that Google business profile, you got to do that. You got to do that right now. That's number one because it's free traffic. It's free. It's like Google will hand you business. Okay. You're searching, you're, you're serving a local radius of customers. Google will return business to you for free. There's, there's nothing better than that. Number two goes along with this and that's, that's uh, acquiring reviews. I just put a product out on this highresponsemarketing.com slash reviews if you want to check it out on my process because I went from zero. I didn't get reviews for 10 years. I went 10 years. It's actually, I think, a little longer than that. I went 10 years without collecting reviews because I, I for some reason, thought it was stupid. I don't know why I thought that. but And then I said, well, I think I should probably be collecting reviews. And I started making a process of collecting them. And I ended up getting really, really great reviews in a really short amount of time. And my business and my local business exploded, like absolutely exploded when I started getting these reviews. I would highly encourage you to get some systems in place to acquire really great reviews. I have a whole product on that, Google highresponsemarketing.com slash reviews. If you're watching on YouTube, that link is below. You can click it. But one of the one of the uh, 
things that you can kind of shortcut that with or help get you fast reviews is review cards. And those can be really cool. You can have them printed really cheap for your business. You can go through me, printing for supercheap.com or wherever. Uh, you can also do NFC cards where you just make it convenient for your customers to leave a review. It's a simple thing you can add. They can scan on the QR code or NFC, tap it. And it's just an easier way to start collecting reviews. But there's lots of processes. Just start getting reviews from customers. Okay, you got a happy customer, go get the reviews. As you get those reviews built up, you're going to just naturally start showing higher in Google results. It's also a protective measure because if you don't, at some point you're going to have an angry customer, you're going to have an upset customer, and they're going to they're going to, they're the ones that are going to jump through hoops. They're going to jump through hoops, they're going to leave you a bad review. And now if cuz you haven't been actively collecting reviews, you're just going to have like two bad reviews. You're going to have like one good review and two bad ones. And it's going to look like a one-star review on Google. It's going to look horrible. Someone's going to search you or search for whatever it is you're offering, real estate agent near me, kitchen cabinets near me, whatever. And they're going to see these crummy reviews. They're going to be like, yeah, I'm not going this place because of this one bad apple or something that jumped through hoops and took all this extra effort to badmouth your company because they were upset. This will happen. Over time, this will just happen. It will naturally happen. You have a Karen or whatever, and they're going to give you a hard time. And they can do that, but you don't have good reviews to wash it out. If you have 50 reviews that are five stars, star, and you have one random bad one, no one's going to give that. And in fact, people are going to look at that and say, you know what? This is a real company. Okay. This is our fake reviews or something. It's, there's a mix. It's just like Amazon. You buy things on Amazon and stuff. You say, well, okay, this is just one loudmouth complainer. Overwhelmingly, the results are positive. I'm going to go with this. So that would be the first things that I would do. The first two things is get that Google profile uh, set up and optimized, and I would start acquiring reviews. Another thing is by having reviews, you increase the value of every other advertising you do. You increase the effectiveness because the reviews on Google are like word of mouth. They're literally just like word of mouth. They're other people's opinions of your company. Now, you can't beat word of mouth. The best word of mouth is someone you trust that tells you something. But second to that, it's someone that you don't know, but a majority of people saying this, this is a good business. That's a really powerful advertising in it. And it affects all the other advertising you do. So if you're running a billboard, you're handing out flyers, you're knocking on doors, you're even making cold calls, okay? You're at on a bus somewhere. You've, you're doing TV, you're doing radio, you're doing whatever you're doing, social media posting. People will often just go search you. They'll go search you online and what they see there may determine how they act. So they might have liked what you got, even with postcards. You know, I'm a postcard guy. They might really like what you have. It might be interesting. And they took that next step. They went on Google, they searched you and what they see may dictate whether they respond or not. So some people are like, they run a good campaign. Like Jake, I didn't, you know, can't believe, I don't know. Maybe you got a crummy company. Maybe your company sucks. Maybe your reputation sucks. Did you look like Google? What does it look like? You got one star review or something, you know, maybe there were people interested and they didn't buy from you because the review sucked. Your online presence sucked. So that's something to, to that's something to really think about. If your reputation online, if your presence online looks like crap or it's not even there, that will hurt all your other advertising methods. And this, this doesn't cost anything. Getting reviews doesn't really cost anything. So it applies to everyone. Number three is separating your marketing efforts into new customers, past customers, and dormant customers. This is a really high level marketing thing. It's buried into this podcast. If you're listening, you're you're really you're learning some really high level stuff that other local businesses are not even thinking of doing. So I appreciate you listening. I really do. I when I do consulting, when I take on a consulting client and I charge a lot for consulting, this is like the key. This is like a key thing. Uh, it's part of my masterclass too. If you're interested in my local marketing masterclass, it's highresponsemarketing.com slash masterclass. But it, this is like a big money thing. This is how you take a, even a company that's doing really well and just wants to take things to a bigger level. Uh, this is how you do it, but this applies to every, every single business under the sun, pretty much, unless you do a one-time type thing where you're just one-time clients and you don't, you don't ever deal with those people again. But if you're a local business that sees people more than once, this is for you. I would separate your marketing efforts. So your plans, your strategies, 
any, anything that you're going to do advertising marketing wise, I would separate that into what are you going to do to get new customers and budget for that? What are you going to do to get existing customers coming back more frequently and budget for that? And what are you going to do to bring back old dormant customers and budget for that? So there really should be these three different kind of budgets or amounts that you're comfortable spending acquiring these people back. As a general rule, you're going to spend the most money getting a new customer. They, that's going to take the most effort and money getting a brand new face in the door. Uh, and then it, it should be as cheap as possible bringing current ones back again. That should be as cheap. That should be as cheap as you can possibly get it because they're already sold, right? They're already happy and you should have a lot of way. There's a lot of ways that you can bring these people back in without costing as, as much as it would to get a new customer. And then you have dormant customers. You have people that you haven't seen in a long time, that they were customers. Maybe you want to bring them back. You want to entice them to come back. So that it's kind of in the middle. You're going to be spending more than you would for a a current past customer, but not maybe not as much or as much as an as a new customer. But they should be really broken into three different segments. You should just plan all your marketing efforts into those three kind of avenues. This will help you tremendously because if you don't, you're you're doing the exact same marketing for everyone. You're spending the same amount of money to bring in a new customer as you would an old customer. This is like giving giving away the house okay you give away like a, a maybe you're maybe you're going to advertise something and you're going to do postcards or whatever it is you're going to run a really great sale like something really and maybe you're maybe you're even like a restaurant and you're going to give like a free buy one get one free entree or something what about all the people that come to you regularly they're going to come in anyways okay do you really need to give them a free meal or a free cocktail or something that can be nice but it, it can be too much. Like you're spending too much money to acquire as someone who's already going to come in. They would have came in on a 10%. You know, maybe if you just sent them some postcards, your current customer list, just sent them a post, hey, here's 10% off your next visit. That might get them to come in a little more frequently or get them to maybe uh, tilt the weights in your favor when they're thinking about where to go. Like, oh, go, okay, let's go we'll use this coupon and use this deal. Versus getting someone who's never been there before, where you're willing to like spend more money, you're willing to give more away to get a new person in the door, but you don't want the existing customers to to be doing that too. Like it can save you so much money. It can make your tracking easier. It, it does w uh, wonders of health for your business. Like it will make a radical change. So the goal is to, you don't have to focus on dormant ones so much, but new customers and current customers, split that marketing in two. What are you going to do to bring in new people? What are you going to do to keep existing customers coming back? That's a reason that I really like, another reason that I really like direct mail. You know, I'm a big postcard guy. I love postcards because you can, you can just send postcards to your existing list. Like you can, only they see it, or you could even filter depending on your, the list you have. If you don't have a list, we'll talk about that in a second too, but uh, really high spending customers or people who don't spend, you can cater to them. You can make send one postcard that's for them, another postcard for uh, less frequent people, people who are coming all the time, maybe not give them as much of a deal. And then you can send it to non-customers, right? New prospects, brand new people. And give them super, super incentives or limit it. You know, you could send 5,000. So you're not putting on a billboard or on a TV ad where everyone can come in. It's limited to only people who got the postcard. So I think postcards are just a fantastic medium for, for that. You can cater exactly to the people you want. Only they see it. So that would be the third thing I do as a rundown. I would do one. Uh, the, the first thing I do is optimize that Google profile listing. Uh, two, I would start acquiring reviews. And three, I would just separate your marketing into new customers, current customers, and old customers. I should mention about the list. If you don't have a list, you should start starting a list. Okay, some businesses don't have lists. Some, you have natural lists. You have a database. You have a CRM. You have service records. You have you have a list of your customers. But others like restaurants and boutiques and stuff, you got to get start getting a list. Whether that's through your POS system and sending them text messages, whether that's through giveaways, drawings, where they even where they fill out their email, they fill out stuff into a form, they put things into a jar, whatever you can do to collect their information, because now you can easily market to these people. You can send them emails 
you know, how much does email broadcast cost? Because like nothing, a text campaign, it's so cheap. You can communicate with these people so inexpensively and keep them coming back. Uh, even just sending a postcard, right? You can send them a postcard. You can send them a postcard on their birthdays. You can send them a um, holiday postcard. You can, you can send them SMS. You can send them emails. You can send them all this stuff for really inexpensively to keep them coming back. So start building that list. It's really, really important. Get a list. It's easy to get customers that are happy spending money again. Sometimes you just got to give them a little bit of a reason, but it should not cost you the same amount as getting a new customer. If you're just doing, if you're just doing advertising everywhere and you're just spending it all everywhere, it's a big mistake. It's a huge, it's a huge mistake. Number four is figuring out how much you can spend to acquire a new customer, an old customer, a dormant customer. Businesses do not do, local businesses don't do this. They just don't. And if you do, your business is going to be on a, a very fast path of success, especially if you tie this in postcards. I'm a good postcard guy. I love EDBM. I love targeted direct mail. But whatever marketing you're doing, please figure out how much you can spend to acquire a new customer. If you don't know that answer, you, are, you don't know marketing yet. You are not good at marketing, and that's fine. Most local businesses aren't. They, they really don't have a clue what they're doing when it comes to marketing. They have no clue. And that's totally fine. Like you didn't go to school for the market. They don't even teach that. I don't think like you didn't get in a business to learn marketing. You likely went into business because of the thing you're doing. So you're learning it here. You can thank, you can thank me for learning it here, but you should be able as a local business owner to know how much you can spend. If I were to sell you customers, okay. If I were to just say, Hey, I'm selling you new customers. I will put a new customer walking in through your door. How much will you pay me? I, I mean, I guarantee 99.9% .9 of you listening to this have no clue. You have zero clue how much you could spend or, or be willing to spend. And part, part of you've never thought about that. And you, you never categorize people from old to new. If you were to buy customers, which you can do with marketing, literally buy customers, you need to know how much you are willing to spend for a new customer versus an, a current uh, one coming back because you wouldn't spend the same amount right you wouldn't spend if you let's say you could spend forty dollars to have a new customer walk in the door you wouldn't spend that same amount for someone who comes in every week you'd spend maybe a dollar you know okay i'll pay a dollar to get this guy coming in more or this girl coming in more that's why it's so important to just categorize your marketing efforts and assign values and budgets of what you can spend you can dictate okay this campaign was successful I was more than happy to bring in these new faces or this one is more than, you know, we brought in a whole bunch of current customers. We didn't pay a, a whole lot. This is great versus just blasting everything out, spending the same amount of money on everyone, which is stupid. It's understandable. We all do it. Like until you know better, you, you do it, but figure out how much you can spend to bring a new customer through that door. You'd be surprised and you got to figure out lifetime value. Okay. There's formulas and just, just think. What can I spend? I know they'll come back. I know they'll probably spend this much. What can I spend to get a new person through the door? And that leads to the question of what can I give away? What, how much incentive? Like if I can spend X amount of money, it's going to cost me this much money to advertise, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on a postcard, how much can I really, am I comfortable giving away? Like, can I give them 50% off? Can I give them something totally free? Can I give them a free entree or something to come in with two people or something you know you start thinking these wild things which is great can i give this away can i give it all for new people because with direct mail which i hope you're you're targeting you can target exactly new people people have never been to your your store before but you could just get an idea of what you can spend so you know is this successful now once you know that it becomes that's how you build an ATM machine. That's how an ATM machine really gets built. It's a big factor in a building an ATM machine is like, how much can I spend to get out? Like I can, if I can spend $3, but I can get back $8, like I will just run this machine all day. I will feed it money all day because it will return more. That's how your marketing should be. Your marketing should really be a case of how much can I spend and just get back more money. Your marketing, even as a local business owner, really ultimately should just be, I just want to keep feeding this machine and I will just keep getting this money back and your business will grow and grow and grow. And that's how it, that's how it can work.
that's how it should work. But you've got to have these other things in place. You've got to have a good reputation. You've got to have some reviews on Google so that everything looks good. You've got to have the right way to advertise postcards. You've got to have a lot of things in place. But once those things are in place, you just feed this machine money. You just keep feeding it money. You know you can give away this. You know you can give away these crazy efforts because you get new people every time. Then these new people come in and then they're on your list and then you're sending them stuff that's really inexpensive to get them back in the door. Meanwhile, your competitors are like, what the heck? They're not doing any of that. Why is this guy so busy? He came out of nowhere. This girl started this business. She came out of nowhere. The heck is she doing? Because because you had, you had advanced marketing that's really large corporations are doing versus large corporations are doing, but you're applying it to the local local business. You're applying it to your local little business. Not many people do that. It's not about spending a ton of money. Okay, you think, oh, if I only had a hundred thousand dollar a month budget or something. It's not no, because you can blow through that. It's just about being smart of who you're targeting and how much you can spend and actually wanting to spend that money. Because you want to feed that machine. It's like, yes, I can definitely spend $20, $50, $100. $100. Sometimes your customers might cost $200 because if you're in remodeling, kitchen remodel, all that stuff, you got to figure out how much the most you can spend. The more you can spend, the better it will work. If you can be creative and say, okay, I can spend more and more and more on these brand new customers because it's a high ticket item, whatever. I'm comfortable spending it. The machine will work faster. It will work better. Number five, the last thing. Number five, the last thing that I would do, and all these things don't cost any money, okay? You're just figuring them out right now. You're just figuring them out. Number five would be figure out who your best customers are and where they live. Who are they? Who exactly are your best customers? And best could be the ones that come back more frequently, the one that you see that spend the most money, the ones that react the quickest, they're low-hanging fruit. I don't know. You just, you got to figure that out. What is a what is a your best kind of customers that you want to get? Because if you're going to throw money into marketing, you should probably go after good customers. Okay, figure this out. Are they are they certain occupations? Are they in certain life stages? Are they in certain ages? Are they in a certain age range? Are they married? Are they not married? Are they recently divorced? Do they have kids? Do they have younger kids? They have older kids? Are they turning a certain age? Are they Uh, homeowners? Are they renters? Are they living in single family homes? We've got it made as local business owners because we're restrained or constrained by these areas, right? It's geographic. We know that they all our potential business lives in these specific areas. And if we start thinking geographically, a lot of marketers and a lot of business people think digitally, they think keywords and and traffic and all these things. I don't even think about those things. I think of geographic where are they living? Okay, on the, uh, the south side of town, are they across here? So what areas? Maybe I've got all the work I can get out of this one area. Maybe I need to go into some other areas that may be receptive or I want to break into or I want to take away from a competitor. You're thinking of areas, ge- geographical bound boundaries, neighborhoods, parts of town, radiuses. You've got to figure out who who these people are that are best to respond, that you most likely want, and where they live. Once you know that and how much you're willing to spend, you can do so much adver- you can do so much advertising in those areas, okay? You can you can do the billboard, you can do the radio, you can find out where they're listening, where you can hit them in multi channels. But if you're just starting out and you want to be really smart, just do some postcard campaigns, right? Figure out where they live, who they are, what stage they're at. Uh, you can buy lists of all these people. You can you can target the neighborhoods they live in. There's so many different ways that you can actually reach these people. That's another reason I really love direct mail, postcard marketing. You can you can get a list of exactly reach out to me, Jake at printingforsupercheap.com or Jake at highresponsemarketing.com. Me and my team will get you all sorted up. Whatever. I don't care who you go through. Whatever you can target these people. You want to get new customers, g- make a killer offer. You know how much you can spend, budget it, figure out, what you can, and and just reach these people, these exact people, because you know where they live, you know who they are, and you're, it's the smartest advertising possible versus 99% of every other local small business that's just, just spray and pray advertising, where they're just spending money on crap 
hoping that it works and it's just going to everyone and they're burning, they're just dumping money. It's like a shovel. They're shoveling money into this furnace of Google and Facebook and they're spending so much money and they don't even know where it's going. Is it working? I don't know. They see a little, like some customers, they don't know where it's coming from. They're spending so much money everywhere uh, and it's just not, and there's not many choices. You have like radio, TV, <laughs> billboard, you're paying some SEO company. I don't know. You're paying some website guy who knows versus just trying to figure these basic five basic things out that don't cost anything. You're going to be in a, such a great place, especially for a new year. As, as of this time, we're, we're coming up on a new year, 2024. So this would be a great time to start planning things for for that year. But when, whenever you're listening to this, is 100% relevant. It's going to be 100% relevant 10 years from now. Get that Google, get yourself on Google optimized, get some reviews so it gains credibility to your company. Start figuring out what, what you can spend on new customers, old customers, and really old dormant customers and breaking all your marketing into those. Figure out where they live, figure out who they are, um, and what, um, how much you can spend to get them. Then your money becomes so smart. You, you're spending, you're building that ATM machine. You're shoving that money into the ATM machine and you're actually getting returns. This is how you actually get returns. That's what it, in the end, it's a math, it's a math problem. Once you have all this other stuff figured out, it's just a math. How much money can you dump into it? That's it. You get, you will get throttled by things like hiring and now you have you have employee drama and things like that you logistical things that you've got to figure out or how can i handle this much work you know i can only do this much work those are all great problems to have that's a whole other thing but as far as marketing you should be getting all the customers you can possibly handle there's no reason that you can't do that that you can't just shove money in and get more money out there's absolutely no reason if you are not able to do that you are missing probably one of these five steps so I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you do, please uh, let me know. Leave me a, a like or a comment or wherever you're watching it. Continue to watch and, and listen. I really appreciate it. You can pick up my free EDDM guide. If you're thinking about EDDM postcards, you can go pick pick that up. That's in the, in the links in the description below. But I really appreciate the support and we'll see you on the next podcast.